Hello everybody and welcome back to the Alpha 19 Beginner's Guide and as you can see we are, well we're exactly where we were left off. We've got everything set up ready to go now. I am comfortable this base would survive but I've got an entire day to do things. So what I'm going to do is, is while it's night time we're going to reinforce these, these walls here. Like so. Now... Oh, we're getting an extra point. That's the reason why I was about to say you want to be doing it. It's because you're still getting an experience point. So we can build up that experience ready for some more perks. Bear in mind, obviously, you don't want to be too much rushing to get leveled up. Because the faster you level, the quicker the zombies will get worse for you. And I know they've smoothed out by the difficulty based off the zombies. And off your game stage level and whatever your server's set to. We just norm normally run normal settings because realistically uh, we like to build a lot of big buildings and stuff like that and if there's like three or four of you in an area then you're going to have a pretty rough time as it is. Your base is going to have to take on like four times the amount of zombies so that's the reason why we don't tend to run a little bit harder. Uh, we have run an insane mode server before now that was fun. It was hard work, it was hard to survive but it, it can be done. Uh, and bases like these survive on, on insane nights as well. Um, now I do know as I say that they have kind of like smoothed out the curve of the difficulty so I'm hoping we'll just get a nice easy first night of it even though there's two of us and the reason why we've got two of us on the um, on the basically on on at the same time is so that can show you that this is going to survive no matter what you know if you've got two of you imagine two of you building this one base you'd have this base done in no time you can enjoy doing other things not to mention it gives you like a month of free reign on your server uh, or your single player, whatever way you're doing it, to get going on your bigger builds or your bases or whatever it is you want to do. And the only thing you have to worry about there is is obviously wandering hordes. Uh, now the, the last, there's a couple of things we want to do. Um, so we're going to need torches. So as you can see, we can't build the torches just yet because we're going to need the cloth and the animal fat, fat. We may not be able to get the animal fat at this stage. I've not seen many animals about. And I'm not going to lie to you, the pigs are an absolute pain to kill at this level. Don't try it. Um, so we may end up running like this kind of lightness. It's a little hard to see. Or what we can try and do is, is if we can obviously head back to our other base. We can, uh, we can go ahead and get that one torch we have, pull it somewhere a little bit higher. And we should have enough light off that. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here because we get the one torch. It does mean, obviously, our other base has no lighting, so, um, yeah, be careful of that. But I'd rather have my horde base lit up so I can attack the uh, the zombies as best as you can during the horde night, because, again, more chance of experience points. Now, I do know I say, you know, be careful of how much you level, but as long as you level up comfortably for what you can do, you've got no problems. And bear in mind, you know, the more perks you're unlocking, the more damage you're doing and stuff like that. So you just got to be careful which perks you're doing. Um, again, it's all based off your play style. So as I've always said, you know, like I did when I was covering the perks earlier on, make sure you're picking, you know, a play style you're comfortable doing. If, if you're going to panic every time you go close to a melee attack, go ranged. You know, there's plenty of ranged weaponry in this game. And obviously most of the weapons you get later down the line is ranged. You know, your sniper rifles, marksmen's. Machine guns, pistols, they're all ranged. That being said, I know a lot of people like going in um, at melee range. I've had a bit of fun with that in the past, where I've got the uh, the, the fist knuckles, you know, like the iron knuckles or something like that. Um, and again, if you like going melee rather than ranged because of the noise situation, because obviously when you're firing weapons around, you're making a lot of noise and you're risking running the lines of having uh, more zombies appearing because of that. There we go. So again, it's just based off what you want to do. Plenty of options for everybody. We upgraded all that. These. Uh, all the central pillars are done. I'm just doing these here so they've got something to hit on. This is all extra. This just means it's going to take them a little bit longer to go through it. But as I say, what we've got now is more than enough. And I can't see this base going anywhere close to um, being damaged. Uh, sorry, not being damaged, sorry, being destroyed. Rem there's going to be a couple of things that I'm going to point out during the Horde Night that we do need to take care of. Um, and I'll mention it here and I will re-mention it again. The, if you're on one side of the base, the zombies are going to go to that one side of the base and they're going to wreck it. 
you stood over a supporting pillar, a supporting pillar is going to get absolutely battered by the zombies. Just bear that in mind. Um, and just coordinate where you're standing with your, you know, if you've got other people on. Now, any of you who have followed my Alpha 18 guide will know exactly what that is because we had a situation where I didn't repair the base at all for an entire 28 day cycle. On the 28th day horde night, we had somebody jump on who, um, who stood on one end of the base and I stood on the other end of the base. And what I ended up doing was the zombies would basically go between the two and wreck everything between the two and they ended up taking the final supporting structure and the base collapsed uh, that was intentional however had i had a choice i would not have done that um in my own play you know my playthrough and i don't do that in my own playthrough always keep yourself together keep an eye out where your where your friendlies are most servers run with kill allies only, so I mean we, we did start off this server with kill anybody, which has now been altered. That was an oversight. So there's a lot of things you're going to end up, obviously, having to keep in mind when you're running around your horde base. Uh, which is why I've just obviously mentioned a couple of things now, just so they're in the back of your head if you do obviously jump ahead without seeing the results of the horde day. So we're almost on daytime now. You'll have to excuse the, uh, the slight cut there. I didn't want to hear you sneeze down, uh, down your ears. The wonderful delights of the English weather means that I get summer plus winter plus summer plus winter. All in the space of a week. Well, hopefully I've kind of got you set up. So if you do want to jump ahead without seeing the highlights of the Horde Night, then by all means, you know, take what I've said, use it. I am, um, this isn't always the best way of doing things by any means necessary. I, I've, I mentioned that at the beginning and I'll mention it again. There are other ways of doing things. This is the way I've done that I've found works. And you don't need to follow this as is. As I say, some people have it and you can more than welcome to join Discord and question it with other people. They've, they've done this way, they've survived, it's worked every time. It's worked on harder settings before now because principles of the design are there. And as long as you stick to them principle designs when you're building anything at all, it'll stick. Now, one thing I will comment on is, is on the previous um, major s series we did on Alpha 18, we started using the sliding, f f the like half cut um, edges because in Alpha 18, they couldn't climb up them. Um, I wasn't a big fan of doing that uh, because to me it's almost exploiting something in the game and usually an exploit they will remove and lo and behold Alpha 19 they no longer treat them as blocks they can't attack apparently. We haven't had any proof on that yet but it is rumoured to have been removed which I'm kind of glad for because a zombie would just hit anything in front of them um, but it was fun to use so... Just, uh, just don't use that tactic this time around until we've tested it, is all I'm saying. Um, so yeah, so as you can see, most of the ground floor is now fully upgraded. I am going to cut here because I don't want to watch you... Um, I don't want you to watch me just digging over trees, which we're going to do. So I'm going to spend the next, probably in-game, say, six or so hours just basically hitting on trees. And then we'll come back and I'll explain to you what you want to do from there if you want to do anything extra so I'll see you all shortly and welcome back everybody now I didn't get as much as I was hoping for because I ended up getting quite full of a POI I dropped it to a POI and it had a couple of good bits and bobs in it uh, we don't need the shovels just yet so we'll get rid of the shovels however I also bumped into a wolf so we've now got some leather some other bits and bobs, just like some more meat. I'm going to use that meat in a second so we can get ourselves some health. But let's drop off everything we can drop off. See what will fit into there. And we also got two more animal meat as well, so we can actually think about doing that. Uh, get another torch as well, which will be quite good. A lot of this stuff you're going to use later down the line, so just keep hold of it if you want. Don't worry if you don't want. I'm going to go ahead and go for just maybe one or two. We'll just drop off the rest of the stuff. I did find a level four blunderbuss, which is quite nice. I'll just drop the empty glass in there because we managed to pick up some murky water as well, wherever it is. There it is. 
Dukes, I'll keep all of them, it's a good number of dukes. Don't want any more stuff like that. Cook them. Uh, I'm going to level 3, which I'll keep hold of for a high tower in case he doesn't have one. I've got some spur bars, keep hold of them just in case. Ammo. And now the armor double pack mod, which we'll discuss in a moment. Lockpicks, which I don't need just yet. I'll need a few of them before you even think about lockpicking because they'll break them like nobody's business. Found the paintbrush and a advanced bellows, which will be useful later down the line. So I think that's everything I want to get rid of. Now let's think about we can make bacon and eggs. Because we've got raw meat and eggs, we can make a single bacon and eggs, which is really good for us. We can also do grilled meat, which is good for us. Or you can do boiled meat, which isn't the best in the world, but it's not bad. We're going to need some boiled water, so we'll boil the water. And then I'm just going to grill the meat. And then once I get that bottle of water, I will... Um, well, that last egg there. I think. Yeah, you need five raw meat. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop the last two raw meats in first. Still got the animal fat. So, a boiled egg. I bet the eggs are really good. Give you 36 food, 18 health, and a max stamina bonus. So we're going to go ahead and use that because we're low on food again. So that should keep us going just for a little bit. Let's talk about the double ar armor double pocket mod. Increases your carry capacity by two, so two of these bars will fill up. It'll also tell you decreases the encumbrance penalty by two by installing this modification in your armor. So, if we go ahead to our character, I did find myself some strap scrap gloves. You notice it has a modify ability. Click on the modify. Now, I think if I remember rightly, level three items give you one modifier, level four items give you two, five give you three, and six give you four. You also get cosmetic slots to change the colour as well. But any mod that your armour will take will flash green in a little like cogs there. You can go ahead and slot that in there. And then when I complete it, we've now got two extra slots, which means now our encumbrance will be slightly less when we are full up. That's why I say don't bother too much with pack mule unless you really are ferrying stuff over all the time. You can just go ahead and use the storage chests that we did. Uh, now the other thing that I did do was is I pl obviously planted all them trees down earlier and they've just popped up just now. So we're going to go out and drop them down whilst I discuss what I'm going to do next. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab myself the two extra torches. Now we did grab the torch from the other house as well. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to craft as many stone arrows as I can, which is 187. And then with whatever I've got left, I'm going to look at traps. Wood spike traps. I'm going to make as many wood spike traps as I can right now. Because when I go out here. Now. This is using your abilities a little bit more effectively. Because you're gaining uh, experience for cutting trees down and stuff like that. Oh, there was factors hiding in, in, in the tree. You're also building stuff whilst you're gathering more stuff so you really are massively effect you know being massively effective with uh, with your use time usage these are a little hard to see when the tree goes down now these aren't giving me massive amounts of wood but i want to clear them because if you've got trees nearby to your horde base and you've got zombies running through the trees it's a little harder to get shots off on them because obviously they're going to be through the trees you can't get a good line of sight so i only placed these here hoping they would grow a little bit quicker than they did actually um, just so I could grab a little bit of extra wood close by to the horde base um, before the horde night so we could uh, obviously traps and upgrade that last bit of floor as well because I like the last bit of floor to be done just so we don't wreck it too and so there shouldn't be too many trees I don't think I've planted many of them and as I say because they're growing in the desert you're not going to get massive trees in the desert uh, obviously there's lack of water but they do grow as you can see here the evidence for all to see and they're only like 300 so you don't get much wood out of them either but you know every little helps and as they say but as you can see in the top there day seven seven is highlighted in red so it means we've got a horde night now if you've got random horde nights on depending on what it's set to to warn you that's what it's going to look like on any number that you get that is going to be a horde night so i know you can set it to randomize it so you don't know when the horde night's going to be but if everything's set to default then day seven at about eight o'clock in the morning it'll flag red it tells you you've got a horde night incoming so you've really now got this last little bit of time to get yourself prepped and ready to go 
later down the line when we come to doing some big builds and stuff like that 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 red seven it's pretty much a warning for anybody who who's on to get your gear and get set up in the horde base because you've got things like generators that need fueling up you've got ammunition to put in your turrets you've also got you know ammunition to pick up for your weapons that you've got make sure you've got repair kits repairs enough food and water to last all them kind of things are what you're going to want to know when that red seven appears oh. we're just crafting as many arrows as we can that's why you've got to keep an eye out as you're going around for the feathers because we haven't really got that much in comparison to what I'd like to have. Uh, and we'll probably go through all of them during the Horde Night. Get the last little bits. Now, what we're going to do here once we've uh, gathered all this up and we're ready to go, uh, myself and Hightower, we're going to we're going to be we're going to be coming over to my base. We're going to do the Horde Knight on my base. We're going to roll back the... Oh, that's the problem you do have when you stack up so much. Go ahead and... I'll roll. And I want traps in there. Just do 30 traps for now. I want to use all my water upon traps. Just bear that in mind if you are stacking up. Like if you get you know a tool that needs repairing, you've even got a choice of waiting until your, your queue's done, or you have to cancel your queue out. Right, that'll do us for this here. Oh, what's over another cactus? A little bit of trees over there, but it shouldn't be a problem. So as mentioned, we've got ourselves. That sounds like a wandering horde. It looks like just one. No, it's two. As I said, I don't want my horde base being damaged at this stage, so I'm just going to keep him away from it. Go. Oh, he's going to try and start running at me. Oh, no. The XP you've seen in the top, uh, in the bottom right. Oh, no, it's not XP, sorry, it's the number of arrows that are being crafted. Just keep him here. There we go, that's one down there, a pain in the ass to kill them. Down. Oh. There we go, two down. Looks like it was just a two. I said keep them away from your base at this stage because we're not ready to uh, kill them yet. Now, I'd like to have had more torches, but we've only got three. We're going to need one inside and then the rest outside. I'm going to place one by the door here. Then I'm going to place one on the other side. What that's going to do is going to give us a half decent view of the external part of the building. And then when they do finally break in, we've obviously got some lighting on the side as well. And I'm just going to place it. Well, I'll probably place it. Let's have a look. We'll place it above the door here. Not the best, but it should give us just enough lighting just to see what we're doing. Then we've just got the rest of the floor to do now. And then we are pretty much set. The only other thing we've got to do now is obviously place down some of the traps. So I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, they've only got one more left anyway. But we'll have a few traps in a minute. And I'll just show you where to place the traps. And I've done a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of hunting with the traps and see what's best. Now, during the insane mode, I learned a few tricks with them. And that I hadn't previously thought about and obviously the mapping of the um the zombies and which way and direction they go sometimes has an effect on obviously where you place your traps always remember they're going to go for the weakest point of the building and usually as you saw them them zombies do that it's usually the door uh, i don't know what it is but the door just seems to be the weakest point even though it's metal at the moment whether it is actually weaker or not i'm not sure off the top of my head but they believe it is or whether they're just now designed to go towards the door, then I don't know. We'll see on the Horde Knight which direction they go. If they go by the door, it'll be good for us because obviously we've got the light there, we've got a good coverage of that. And we could have placed the box above that as well, so we've always got coverage of the door, but I kind of wanted it at the back just in case, and then we can obviously move them away from an already damaged part of the base. Um, it's not near any supporting structure, but we should be alright over there. We're almost... 
upgraded on the floor. I say don't necessarily need to do this, but for aesthetics purposes, I want to whack it on here just so it's looking good. Ready for our Horde Knight. Also, there'll be less for me to repair, repair and replace at the end of the Horde Knight because, as I said on the previous one, all I did was literally left it for four hordes and it was still up the first three. But on this one, I'm gonna, because obviously we're only doing the seven days guide, I will more than likely uh, repair this every time because then other people can use it. And we'll give it a bit of an upgrade, which we'll probably cover in a series as well. Uh, and then we're going to be moving on to doing our massive build, which is going to take a long time. So we need somewhere that's going to hold up for a while. Which is exactly what this base does. Not to also mention that, uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of people on, so the time's going to tick away. Now, the last thing I haven't commented on, which has just landed uh, at some stage, is the little yellow marker that you can see on my, my, uh, my compass stone. If I look at the map, you can see it just on the map there. This here is an Ur drop. Now, depending on what your server's set to, it can drop at any time. Uh, three days is usually when they drop. Um, that'll stay on because I've got the markers saved on for when people come onto the server and want to find them. But they're really, really useful. They tend to have a lot of food in them. So whenever you can, if you grab it, then you'll usually do all right. Since we're up here, and that's quite a ways down, and I don't want to waste your time on camera, I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to run down now. We're going to call it here. And then we're going to come back just before the Horde Knight. And I'm, all I'm literally going to do is run to the to the um, airdrop there, grab the airdrop and run back to the base. And then we're set and good to go. Um, the only last thing I do want to do, which I'll do before I run away to that base, is just, uh, to that airdrop, is just talk about traps. Now, if you place a trap on the edge here, it's pretty decent and you're pretty good. Because what will happen is, is whilst they're hitting this, they're going to be injured by the traps. But it's also going to kill them as well. If you place a trap like here, what you are going to do is you're going to slow them down. So they'll run for it, be slow, and you can hit them. So I'm going to place my traps. I'm going to leave a gap of three by the door just so it's easy for us to walk in. I'm going to place my traps just outside the area here. And I'm not going to place loads of traps down. Just enough to just kind of slow them down a bit. You don't need loads of traps. But they just, they, they help. They help to slow them down. It'll give you something, you know, to injure them a little bit as well. If you've got lots of time left, by all means, put two or three layers of these traps down. They'll be great. They'll kill the zombies. Take your base a little bit better. You know, if I was looking at day 14, I would probably place at least three layers of traps there. But that'll be us for the base. The base is built, ready to go. Hightower's finishing off at his end. We're not going to run right through that base because I've already done it twice and blown up. We're going to head onto the road here. But Hightower's going to finish off his POI. He's then going to come over to my base. We're going to get set, ready for Horde Knight, and hopefully he'll enjoy the outcome. The video with the Horde Knight is going to include both Horde Knights, hopefully. Because um, it's only... Or in game hours, so it shouldn't take too long to do both of them. And then we will hopefully get time to just pop on and show you another little idea if you are struggling on the game. Um, but until then, that's it for this episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section if you've got any suggestions, questions, ideas, anything whatsoever. Let me know. As always, I will get back to you. But until next time, everybody, take care for now. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye for now.